The energy we call heat and that we measure as temperature is due to the vibration of individual atoms that make up matter. Since it is energy of motion, it is kinetic energy. And since this motion occurs at the scale of the individual atoms that make up matter, it is called internal kinetic energy of matter. A central characteristic of heat is the fact that it can move from object to object. Heat can move in three different ways. Which of these three types of movement dominate in any given situation depend on the characteristics of the matter involved and the phase it's in. The first type of motion is conduction. Conduction occurs in solids. Atoms and solids are close together and arranged in fixed positions. Increasing the internal kinetic energy of a solid does not change the position of individual atoms. Rather, it makes the individual atoms vibrate at higher frequencies. Applying a heat source, like a flame, to one part of a solid will cause the molecules closest to the flame to gain energy and vibrate more. This increase in the internal kinetic energy of the molecules closest to the flame increases the temperature of these molecules. Since temperature is defined as an increase in the capacity to transmit heat, the higher temperature closest to the flame causes the heat to flow through the solid. As heat flows, it increases the vibrational energy of more and more of the atoms in the solid. This will continue as long as there is a temperature difference across the solid. Conduction requires atoms to be close together and locked in place, like they are in solids. The next way heat can flow is called convection. Convection requires atoms to be able to move relative to each other, making this the form of heat flow that dominates in liquids and gases. Rather than the transfer of energy from molecule to molecule, convection is caused by the actual movement of individual molecules relative to each other. Take a room full of gas molecules. All of the gas molecules in the room have energy and are moving around. If we apply a heat source by lighting a fire on one side of the room, some of the energy from that fire will be transferred to the molecules of gas in the room. The increase in energy makes the molecules in the gas vibrate more and move faster. The net effect of this is that it causes the molecules to spread out, making the gas in the area around the heat source less dense. This lower density causes that gas to rise up and away from the heat source. As it rises and takes more space, this gas pushes higher density, that is cooler molecules of gas, out of the way. This less dense, lighter, higher energy gas spreads out across the top of the room, pushing more dense, slower moving, lower energy molecules down and pulling them in towards the fire. These then warm up and also start to rise. As the higher energy molecules move across the top of the room, they lose energy and become more dense, causing them to sink, reinforcing the movement of the less energetic molecules towards the fire. This creates a convection cycle, where warming in one area causes gas to move up and away. That movement forces less energetic gas molecules to move in to replace the rising gas. At the same time, at a distance from the heat source, gas molecules cool, sink, completing the cycle. This cycle continues as long as there is a transfer of heat from the heat source to the denser, in other words, the cooler gas in the room. Convection is important in many systems, including the global weather and the movement of water in the oceans. The final mechanism has been mentioned indirectly, but I did not call attention to it. In both the conduction and convection examples, the initial heat source was a fire. Heat spreading or radiating from a fire is an example of the third mechanism. Radiation is unique in that it does not require matter to transfer energy through space. So radiation is the only way energy can move through a vacuum, meaning among other things, it is how energy from the sun gets to the earth. It is also why we can cook things in an oven or over an open campfire without the food having to touch the material radiating the heat. Radiant heat is a type of electromagnetic energy. Here's a summary of the mechanisms by which heat flows. Conduction dominates in solids, where atoms are close to each other and locked in fixed positions. It involves the direct transfer of energy from molecule to molecule. Convection is the movement of energy driven by the movement of molecules from place to place. It cannot occur in solids because it requires movement of molecules, so it dominates in liquids and gases. Finally, radiation is electromagnetic energy. It does not require matter to transmit energy, and it is how energy moves through the vacuum of space.